Hi, thanks for being with us. My name is Richard Moore. I'm executive director of Texas Community College Teachers Association. And uh, I'm really excited today to be uh, talking with one of our uh, uh, partners that we've been working with for the past year, I guess. Um, y'all have been, y'all were at the convention last spring and uh, met a lot of our folks and worked very closely with us and with Texmatic um, on, um, on what y'all are offering. Um, it's been really interesting uh, getting to know Derivata and uh, how y'all go about your work, uh, just seeing how how you go about uh, what your method is, uh, the way you innovate, the way you engage your users. Uh, it really is more of a community than just a transactional uh, you know, choice to buy a piece of software or something. Uh, it really is, is uh, about the relationship. And uh, you'll um, have just a very tight feedback loop on what's working, what's needed, that kind of thing. And it really, I think, reflects a lot about the way TCCTA does things. Uh, we always say we're nothing except our members. And uh, so we really try and have good communication, understand the needs and ideas of our members and have that drive uh, the way the organization uh, goes about our business. So it just seemed like a very natural fit. And uh, uh, we really want to take this time today on this webinar uh, to uh, introduce you all to any of our members that you haven't met yet and uh, maybe dive a little deeper for those who know a little something about Derivata on, um, on what you all offer and uh, how it might be relevant to the work that, that our folks do. So uh, Josh Dyer, thanks so much for being with us and uh, take it away. Thank you so much, Richard. Yeah, it's been a pleasure working with the TCCTA over the last uh, year or so. Um, and we really sort of value this this relationship and this partnership. And we're we're hoping to expose more people to Derivata and, and hope that we can sort of, you know, help in, in your, your ventures there. Uh, my name is Josh Dyer. I'm an account executive with uh, Derivata. And uh, my focus is uh, exclusively on the higher ed. So I'm, I'm helping to drive the awareness and in business with the, the higher ed aspect of, uh, of Derivata. We actually, our content goes all the way down to about fifth grade math and then all the way through Calc 3. So we kind of run the gamut on what we're able to offer, but I'll give a quick step back and talk about, you know, what Derivata is, how it sort of got started, and then I'll hop in and I'll show uh, a lot of the sort of key features that I think will be sort of relevant for the, the folks in the system. And we'll go through that. And we have Jennifer on the line too. So if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to to ask, uh, but we'll go and record this thing available to the rest of the system as well. Um, so like I said, my name is Josh Dyer, I'm an account executive with Derivata. Um, what we're gonna do uh, is, you know, I'll, I'll dive in, in, in here in a little bit, but I wanted to give just a little background on how Derivata got started actually, and sort of help sort of crystallize our thought process around, you know, what we think about the, you know, what we're offering and, and how we sort of help our partners, um, you know, in, in the math instructors. So, uh, Derivative got started actually um, by Devlin Daly. He was the co-founder of Instructure, the, the Canvas learning management system. And so along his journey, um, you know, talking to instructors and, and you know, sort of pushing the, the learning management system, you know, the goal was always that, you know, they create this structure so that, um, you know, publishers are, and other sort of technologies could integrate into the learning management system. And sort of along that journey, one of the things that Devlin noticed was that you know, that, it, that never really happened. You know, the a lot of what you see in the system and a lot of what you see in the sort of offerings available for math instructors is that, you know, you have something that sort of loosely integrates into the learning management system, you're linking out somewhere, students are creating profiles, logging into a separate system, and then those systems all sort of loosely kind of talk to each other. And sort of the goal really was to have everything live within the learning management system. So it's kind of the first thing they thought about in that venture was kind of the technology piece, right? How do we integrate in a way that sort of makes it seamless for our users? And so, you know, tackling that, um, having uh, been uh, a part of the, the the Canvas journey, so we the integration piece is something that, you know, was was first on the list to, to make sure that, you know, we could really sort of tighten that up and sort of make that process a little bit smoother. So you'll notice when I show you guys today that we're not gonna be linking out anywhere. We're going to sit within the learning management system um, and, you know, the, the the thing to think about, too, is that I'll show you guys in Canvas today, but we integrate the same way in Blackboard, uh, Boodle, uh, D2L, all the major learning management systems, we work exactly the same. So we have a content library of about 65,000 questions, um, sort, of, sort of dimension. We go all the way down into about fifth grade math, all the way through about Calc 3. 
And, you know, part of what we, we offer is that, uh, so the way we think about, um, you know, offering content is we give you access to the full library. So we give you access to all the content because we know that uh, you often are trying to pull from different resources or you need to sort of help students fill gaps with, uh, you know, with knowledge gaps and things like that. So we give you access to the full library so that you can pick and choose from you know, any of the available sections or books and content that we have available if you need to sort of create content on the fly for specific students and things like that. So that's kind of how we think about offering the content, um, you know, for our users. And that was a big piece, you know, we have the technology side, right? So we want to provide seamless technology that works in, in sort of any environment, but then also the content. And so the backbone behind that content that we offer is also, you know, along that journey of trying to create a seamless process and be able to really sort of provide something meaningful to math instructors with that they, Devlin and his co-founder created a computer algebra system that's kind of the engine behind the content that we deliver. So essentially, we can actually understand the math in real time, give students targeted feedback based on the inputs they actually enter into the system, instead of sort of, you know, comparing something to a standard answer key or giving generalized feedback on certain types of things, we actually can understand the math and that allows us to ask more robust questions. And I think you'll see with other sort of standard publishers um, that are available you know, in the system today, we can ask open-ended questions, um, give auto-graded answers, and then provide feedback based on what students are actually inputting in real time because of that computer algebra system that runs the sort of backbone behind our content. So that's kind of a quick and dirty um, you know, synopsis of how driven they got started, a little bit of our philosophy about what we offer, but all sort of uh, dive in, I'll share my screen and we'll go ahead and just explore um, what Rivita offers. And I'll go over some of the key things I think are gonna be important. And if there's any questions along the way, please obviously feel free to ask. Bear with me one second. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. All right, so we should see Canvas again. I'm gonna show you guys in Canvas, but uh, obviously we work the same way in, in all the other major learning management systems that you might be using. I'm just going to hop into a course. And then I'm going to go grab an assignment. My uh, computer cooperates. So this assignment I'm going to pull up um, is going to be an assignment that students have taken. Uh, it's an derivative assignment. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little real estate here on my screen loads. So this is uh, what we call the educator dashboard. So the first thing you see here is we're integrating directly in the learning management system. So we sit within that iframe, within that window. And so this is what we call the educator dashboard. So we're giving you high level information about an assignment that's been given uh, with Rivita. So we're giving you uh, a breakdown of the uh, students that have started the assignment, students that have finished the assignment, and then an average score. And then down here, we're actually giving you a breakdown of the individual questions on this assignment. So we're giving you some information about, you know, percentage of incorrect and correct uh, average time students are spending on a particular question. And then this little option here under the attempts. So we have three different modes in which uh, Derivata sort of delivers assignments and homework. So think of Derivata as, you know, courseware that's going to help supplement the the instruction that you're given, right? So we're the technology that integrates into the learning management system. We're, uh, we're textbook agnostic. So that means we can be used with any textbook, uh, any open educational resource works great with uh, that's kind of the, by design, how we're designed to integrate. If you have a standard publisher textbook that you like, that works perfectly well as well. So we're textbook agnostic, agnostic and also device agnostic as well. So students can use Derivata on any device that they're bringing to the table, even mobile devices, tablets, Chromebooks, uh, without sort of losing any functionality there as well. Uh, so we work in three different modes. So homework, assignments, and exams. And so we have, I'll, I'll dive into some of the differences between those options, but essentially on assignments, we tend to uh, gravitate towards more mastery-based approach. So students can do multiple attempts trying to get to the right solution. We have, uh, so I mentioned we have a question, an item bank of about 65,000 questions. That's not including like randomization. So all the questions within our library have randomizations and within that. So two students won't necessarily be working on the same identical problem sitting next to each other because we have different variations of all the questions that we offer. And in this particular assignment, so this is just giving you a breakdown of where students within uh, their attempts, they're getting the answer correct. 
So you know some variations on some of these different questions here. I'll touch on this as well. So there's a little button you'll notice next to each of these questions that we have highlighted here that's called spot check. So this is what uh, allows you, so any of these questions can be launched as a spot check session. And what that is, is it's a way to essentially push out a question to your students and have them interact on any device that they happen to be on. And essentially you as an instructor have, are looking at a dashboard and as they submit their answers, you're seeing that pop up on your screen. And what instructors use this for is a way to sort of engage with their students, get them in the system uh, working on a particular problem, but also allows you to sort of see where students might be having problems. It allows you to level set and see, you know, where they might be having a breakdown and that might help you inform your classroom discussion. So I'll dive into that a little bit further here in a little bit, um, but each of these questions can be launched as a spot check section as well. So I'll kind of dive into some of the individual questions um, just to sort of give you a, an overview of the types of things we're able to offer. I'll also show you our content library as well. So I'll show you what it looks like to build out a brand new assignment using Derivative. And then these are the types of questions that we're able to ask. Um, so something like this, we have the ability to answer, you know, ordered pairs, um, things like that. You can click in here. We can see the toolbar that uh, opens up for students. We give a preview window that shows students in real time how Derivative is actually seeing their answers. I'll go ahead and just give some inputs here because I mentioned, so we have the computer address system. So I'm going to enter this as a, an ordered pair. We get a preview of what I'm actually inputting here. You can check the answer and we, we can give feedback here, right? So you'll notice as I sort of entered in my answer, we're giving feedback to the students in real time based on the real inputs and showing you sort of some, we're nudging students in the right direction and giving them some information on why that answer might be incorrect. We can do that in real time because that we have that computer algebra system behind our content. So we have questions like uh, this one. So graphing the equation of a circle, right? So this, um, when students are bringing any device to the table, they can they have a tablet that they can sort of trick and minimize using their their fingers. They can do that perfectly well. All of those things work with great with the with no sort of lapse in functionality at all. So I can go ahead and even sort of you know, manipulate this, move this around the screen. I want to check the answer here and do that. Even on something like this, which is more of sort of a visual question, we can give students feedback, right? You know, we're telling the student, hey, it looks like we you're close, you have the correct radius, but you have the incorrect center. So we're just giving students some information about why that information might be, why that question might be incorrect. Another one I like to show too, just to sort of give you a you know, an overview of the, the types of questions that we're able to ask that, I mean, maybe other systems can't, right? So something like this question, I, I really like a lot. So give an example of a non-function. So this is something that can be answered in, you know, a million different ways. It's an open-ended question that we can actually auto-grade because we actually can understand the math in, in real time. But it's also sort of a good example of how students will interact with the system too, right? So you notice we have a, a toolbar. The toolbar is specific to not only the grade level, but also the type of, of question that's being asked as well. So the, the toolbar actually makes sense and has relevant information for the type of question that's being asked. So we saw before we have a little preview window. I'll go ahead and just give, uh, you know, we'll do something like this, right? So if I want to put an input here, I'll do something like this, right? So we can show students, hey, this is how derivative is going to interpret their answer. And maybe, you know, I'll enter something like this. And this is something that I, as a student, would probably screw up. So I can see right here, hey, this is how derivative is going to interpret that answer. What I was probably trying to do is something like that. So we're giving the students the real time, you know, feedback just to tell them, hey, this is how derivative is going to interpret that answer. Um, I'll go and check this answer. You might have noticed that this is not correct but what it highlights is is that we're actually so for this particular question this is open-ended right can be answered in a million different ways we're running it through a substitution strategy but with the students real inputs giving the student real feedback based on what they actually input into the system you know right at the cosine of x and we're showing them hey this is why this answer might be incorrect and we can do that because of that computer algebra system so if i want to go back and maybe update this Maybe I'll do something like this. And check that answer again. You know, say we've updated that, we've ran it through that same substitution strategy and with the students' real inputs and then we're giving them feedback, this answer is actually correct. 
So I'll pause there for a second. Any any questions so far? All right. I think maybe now would be a good time. Uh, let's go ahead and I mentioned spot check. And so again, I'll just touch on so that each of these questions can be launched as a spot check session. And I think this is kind of a good one to show as an example. So I'll go ahead and grab this question. I'm going to click the uh, spot check button here. It's going to open up a tab. So what we'll see is this question. So graphing the uh, equation of a circle. Go ahead and give myself some real estate. So essentially, this is what you can do with your students. So a lot of instructors will come in, maybe do this at the start of class. You'll watch a spot check session. And this allows you to kind of level set. Let's see how students are feeling about this type of question. Maybe that informs the classroom discussion for later. Maybe there's some things that we need to reinforce based on what the students actually answer here. So this is a link up here in the right hand corner. This is what you can share with your students. So I'm going to go ahead and actually drop this in our chat here. So anyone here on the line can, can follow along. I, I encourage you to do that if you would like. But you can follow along. I'm actually going to show you as well. So we can share this link with your students. Um, they can follow that link on any device that they happen to be on, any location. So this can be used asynchronously. If you have one in class, also that works perfectly well. They can share this with your students. You can also click the little plus button there, and students can actually scan the little QR code. I'm going to do that and follow along. First thing it's going to do is ask you for your name. So I'm going to go ahead and input that here. I'm going to exit out. So again, we're looking at the, this is that uh, uh, equation that we're looking at, grabbing the equation of a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself an answer this here. I'm going to submit my answer. And you notice, so we have the question here. We're reviewing the question that the students are interacting with. We also have the results tab. Awesome. We have some participants. So this is a dashboard that the instructor will see, right? So a lot of instructors will actually display this to the students if you're on a Zoom session or if you're in class. And show this to the students, you can kind of walk through the different answers. And again, you know, this can be used to help inform the discussion for later, helps level set, just see how students are doing. But as students are um, submitting their answers, that pops up on this dashboard. So you notice that we eat, there's no names or anything associated by default, right? So if you're doing this as a classroom discussion, you might not necessarily want to sort of uh, single out anyone that the, has an incorrect answer or anything like that. So we default to not showing the names, but you can toggle that on if you'd like. And we can also highlight the answers as well. So we default those things to off just so you can sort of use that for the, the classroom discussion, but you'll notice and appreciate the, the folks participating on the, on the line here. But you'll notice, right, so we uh, just in the time that we're here, uh, we were able to launch the spot check session. You were able to submit your answers, interact in whichever device. I didn't tell you which device you needed to be on. You didn't need to create an account with Proctor, or with uh, Derivata. You didn't need to set up a profile or, or log in or anything like that. The goal here is to provide sort of the best quality, you know, technology that's seamless for both students and instructors, right? So we want to sort of, you know, eliminate some of the barriers to entry, some of the technology issues that students might have by sort of making this stuff seamless. So we didn't need to download anything, create profiles. We're able to do this in real time and sort of highlight the, this particular uh, question here. Um, and then we're just giving you some metrics here about some of the uh, you know, percentage of uh, incorrect and correct and since of other errors as well. So I'm actually going to hop out of here real quick. And I'm going to hop over to a different assignment. Bear with me. I'm going to open up another side here. Let's see. I'll grab another. I'll grab this one. So I'm going to launch another spot check session. And so what you should notice is that you didn't need to sort of re readdress the link, re-go to the link. It should have automatically updated on your device. Let me go ahead and answer this. Let me go ahead and do this on my phone here. Let 
begin. So a lot of instructors will do this um, with their students. Um, so you can sort of, you know, go through a bunch of different questions that you kind of want to just level set and see where students are at. And that automatically updates on your device. And if they need to revisit that link, they can automatically do that on whichever device they happen to be on. So I just wanted to highlight that. So, uh, you know, part of that, uh, the goal here is to sort of remove some of those barriers, but both from the instructor side and, and from the student side as well. Another thing I, I kind of wanted to highlight, assuming we don't have any questions, and feel free to either drop them in the chat or, or just unmute and, and ask. If not, I'll go ahead and keep uh, plugging away and show you some more things I think are going to be relevant. I'm going to close this down. Let me go back to our assignment here. Let's go find. So one of the things we, we offer is the ability to, um, for any of the assignments that you have, you can uh, toggle on what we call show work. So that allows um, instructors to then um, have students attach their handwritten work to an individual assignment. So the point of that is, so if you want to, you know, review the student's handwritten work, if you want to sort of uh, maybe use that to potentially give them partial credit, things like that, we actually have the ability to um, tie that to the individual assignment and then also the student as well. So you're not looking through your email inbox, looking for something that the student sent you, going back into, you know, your LMS trying to find the question that they're referring to. So what you can do is actually toggle this on for any assignment. And I'll go ahead and uh, bring an assignment up that I know we have some student work in, kind of highlight what this looks like. So it's an assignment students have taken and drew it up. I'm going up here on the student tab. And I'm going to drill into Edmund here. And you'll notice we have a little button here. It says view work. Uh, but something I highlight too here. So we're given some information about Edmund's work. We also keep the history. So again, this is a homework assignment where you have uh, multiple attempts. You can submit multiple answers, um, sort of trying to that mastery based approach, trying to get that answer correct. We keep that history. So if you need to look back and see where Edmund might be having problems, things like that, you can look at the history, see the progression, see what information they're inputting into the system. And then in addition to that, we actually allow you to then uh, tie that handwritten work so you can review some of their thought process, see where they might be making some missteps. I'll go ahead and click that here. Bear with me, I'll go ahead and display my screen just in a way that we can all review it. If you have multiple monitors, you can set this up on multiple monitors. But what you can do is you can highlight this. So this would be Edmund's handwritten work. You can review and take a look at what they actually submitted within Derivata. And see where they might be going wrong. If you're looking at this and you say, hey, well, uh, you just missed a step here, you can give them partial credit. So you can do that by selecting the drop down here and updating the score. If you want to make a you know, slight adjustment here, maybe it was almost there, but not quite, you can do that, save it. And then we actually show you what the raw score is, what the override adjustment is, and then we also have the ability to provide a late penalty. So if you want to allow late work from your students, but then just apply a progressive penalty within a certain time frame, you can do that automatically through the system here. But you'll notice, so we have this all tied up. Let's say we've reviewed Edmund's work, we, we adjusted the grade, we got the history for you, and let's say you just want to work through the rest of your class. So what you can do is actually up here, call the student selector at the top, and actually toggle your next student. That work's going to automatically update. You can see the screen here. So this is going to be Jonathan's work. Um, and you can sort of motor through your class uh, that way, go through, give the partial credit, review the student's work, all sort of you know in one place instead of diving through your email, looking for a PDF that the student sent you. We actually uh, prompt the student at the end of the assignment to then take a picture with their phone, or they can grab an image or, or a file from the computer as well. And that ties it to the individual student and to the actual assignment itself. So that is our show work functionality. Let me go ahead and adjust my screen here. So from the, the main uh, uh, dashboard here, I'll also highlight a little bit of the options uh, that you have on the assignment level. So again, I sort of mentioned that we work in three different modes, homework, quizzes, and exams, and that just changes the sort of uh, options that you have available. Uh, so I'll take a look at a homework assignment, let's say, 
So you had the ability to customize the amount of randomizations you want to see, um, attempts you want to see. Again, we kind of lean on the homework to more of that master-based approach. So allowing students to try and try and try and submit answers and they can try similar questions if they're having trouble. Um, you can apply a password if you want to toggle on that show work functionality. And we also have the ability to enable lockdown functionality. So if you're giving an exam or you need students to stay within the learning management system, not linking out to other resources, we have that built in directly uh, with an integration with a, a property partner as well. So should you be interested there? And then we also have a up here, I'll, I'll show you what the sort of different screens look like. So a quiz, a little more control um, over what randomization attempts you want to see. Password, you can enable time limits. Um, if you want to sort of structure how students are going to see the solutions. So if you want to toggle that off while students are, you know, all submitting their quizzes, you can leave that off and toggle that on later. And also if you want to allow weight work for the assignment as well. And also highlight the slight differences we have on the exam option as well. So just different modes that you can use the derivative content um, and structure it the way you need to for your classes. So we have the ability to um, toggle on or off a question review. You want to hide the results, things like that that might be sort of relevant for exams that you don't want students to see the work while other students are still working on their um, quizzes and exams. <clears throat> you can have all that control here uh, with Derivata. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. Something else I, I wanted to touch on. So I mentioned, uh, so we have a content library, right? And we give you access to all the content. And so one of the things I think is sort of important to highlight is actually how you create a, an assignment within Derivative. So we can do this from scratch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just go to the Assignments tab in Canvas. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus button here. And this can give us a name. So we work as an external tool in Canvas, but uh, so again, we work in all the major learning management systems. Um, so this will all be done. So no, no need to enter a key secret or anything like that on the instructor level. I'm going to go ahead and select find. And I'm going to select a little bit of here. This is what we call an assignment assembly, right? So this is our, it's our content we're making available. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little more real estate here. And you can see how we have the structured, right? Again, I mentioned we're, we're textbook agnostic, but we're structured um, uh, in sort of a textbook format. So maybe I'll dive into you know, college algebra and give myself a little more room here. So we have different sections that you can drill into. You know, I'll highlight section 2.1 here. Okay, and so this is how you'll, you can build out your assignments. You can review the content. You can look at um, the individual questions that we have in this particular section. Each of these questions, so I can kind of hop around here, but each of these questions also gives you the ability to, um, if you want to actually preview the question, you can do that. To preview this, you can look at what it maybe looks like on a mobile device. If you want to see what the solutions look like, you can review that. See what some of the regenerations look like, what the updated numbers, things like that. So you can do that for all the questions that you're you're selecting. Um, and I'll go ahead and actually I'll grab a few here. I'm gonna go take a look at some of these other sections. Make some. I'll grab a couple here, and you'll notice as I'm selecting this up at the top of the screen here, we're keeping a, a list of the items that we've selected. Uh, one of the things I'll, I'll note too, so we have this, this whole content library, we make this available for you, so you can grab stuff from other sections. So if you're teaching college algebra, we're not just giving you access to college algebra, we're giving you access to the full library. So we know a lot of our partners are having students come into class, maybe they, they have some knowledge gaps that, uh, you know, coming into the course. Um, and so if you need to sort of, you know, help uh, build out assignments for particular students, or if you need to just reinforce different concepts, you can do that because we just give you access to, uh, to everything. You can also search. So if you'd like to search our content library, let's say, um, I'll look for a search term. You can actually search through. So instead of sort of uh, poking around and grabbing, if there's some specific topics that you want to look for, you can do that. We've made a lot of, a lot of updates to how this search functionality works. Some things you can sort of highlight and isolate uh, by subject matter. Uh, different taggings and things like that. 
um, and you know concepts as well. Um, but again, if you're like, okay, let's this is the section that I want to take a look at. This actually brings you to that exact section, so you can search for those questions as well. I'll grab a few here. Again, we're keeping that list of the items we've selected. So another thing I'll point out too. So you we have this this great library of content, but we also give instructors the ability to create their own questions as well. So we have two different modes in which we do that. So we have a simplified question editor, which is uh, a little more user friendly, sort of a, a bit of a drag and drop approach. We give you the ability to sort of create your own questions on the fly. We have an advanced authoring environment as well. So if you have some coding environment uh, experience and you really want to get into the the weeds of, of coding questions, we we have the ability to do that as well. But we have a really robust uh, simplified question editor that we also make available to our partners as well. And that's using this uh, button here. It's a new question. So I'll highlight some of that as well. So again, this is where uh, you, you need to create that question. Some instructors will you know use this if they want to you know input a, a video that they have that's maybe an explanation for a question either above or below an assignment. You can do that um, here if you need to input text, uh, URLs, uh, tables, things like that, images, all of that stuff can be done through our simplified question editor. And again, using the same sort of you know technology and functionality that we have with our, our actual content. You'll notice down here too, we have a, a different input types too. So we have a, the ability to sort of change the way that uh, the inputs uh, are going to be from this from the student side so we have an expression essay interval list uh, matrix ratio piecewise and then multiple choice obviously and all these can be auto graded aside from obviously the essay question so we haven't quite cracked the code on being able to auto grade the essay questions just yet um, i don't know if the, the ai is quite there yet to, to be able to interpret what students might be free form entering but again you have the ability to sort of allow students to you know give an essay question and then you can review that as a manly graded question. Um, something I'll note too is if you do have some manly graded questions in your assignments, we actually uh, give you notification that there are grades that you need to be manually graded just so you know that there's some things, some action items on your side that need to be done as well. But you can do that through our simplified question editor also. You can also change the toolbar type as well. So we have uh, different toolbars that make sense for the types of questions that you'll be creating um, here. And so just so the, the actual things that are available within the toolbar make sense for the question that you're answering. And then that thing I like to, to highlight too is uh, you also have the ability to determine the strictness in which you're going to accept the answers, right? So if you wanna accept all equivalencies of a particular answer, you can scale it all the way down and uh, allow uh, so because we actually can understand the math, you don't need to sort of, you know, dole out all the different uh, iterations of a, partic a particular answer. We can actually understand and provide feedback, um, you know, on those questions, but you can determine the strictness here on which you're going to accept those answers, right? And if you only want to accept, you know, the exact answer that you're, you're creating here for your question, you can do that as well. And then this bottom section is where you can uh, determine, uh, give the feedback uh, that students might see on this, this question as well. So some different resources for you as you're building out your assignments, but I'll go ahead and just cancel this out here. Go back to assignment assembly. And let's, one thing I'll note too, so while we're, we're looking at this, I'll just give myself a little more room. So something to think about as you're building out your assignments, right? Um, we keep a history of the assignments that you build under the section here called My Templates. And so that allows you, so let's say from semester to semester, you're creating your assignments, we'll keep that history for you so that you can go back and just grab assignments that you've created in the past, or if you have some questions within those assignments that you'd like to, to use in, in your new assignment that you're creating, you can do that without sort of having to go through and, and search through the, the content like a you did before. So we keep that history just so you can grab that um, and then you can pull that in just as easily as you're pulling in your, your other content. So I'll um, notice we have a we have six items selected here. I'll go ahead and hit next. So this next screen um, allows you to review the questions you've selected for your assignment. You review them, take a deeper, a deeper look, you can either remove or adjust the order things like that. If you want to adjust the points, which adjust the, the question weighting, you can do that as well. I'll go ahead and select create. 
this is going to allow us to fully assign that in. So one of the things instructors might do too, so this is Canvas, right? So if you just wanted to grab this assignment and use it for purely a spot check session, you can do that, just save it. And it's actually not uh, made uh, as a grading, it's not made as an assignment that'll be graded for students, but just something that you can use to then, you know, inform the classroom discussion. If you want to use a spot check uh, for that purpose, a lot of instructors will do that. You don't need to, but I'll go ahead and just save this here. And then this is going to be our assignment pulled directly into that window. So again, it's just kind of highlights that this is where the assignment sits, right? We're not in a different system. Students aren't logging into another place or creating a profile or an access code to, to access the, the content. It's all done right where they would normally do their assignments. And so um, one of the things I think is nice is that, uh, you know, we sit within that window. Students don't necessarily need to know they're taking, you know, exam or taking an assignment with Derivata. They're just doing an assignment within the learning management system where they're doing their other work. And so really goal here is to be able to provide, you know, instructors with the best quality technology that we can provide that's available, you know, we think in the world um, and allow instructors to then use that to sort of, you know, to, to help with the, you know, instructing students. So that allows uh, us to be, uh, you know, paired with any open educational resource. Um, so again, I kind of mentioned that before, but we're, you know, textbook agnostic. So if you have a textbook that you want to use, or if there's, you know, something that students can, you know, uh, rent for, for the semester, things like that. So it allows the opportunity to provide, you know, really great sort of uh, functionality and, and technology to students, but without sort of uh, the burden of uh, purchasing a full, you know, package from, you know, maybe your standard publisher as well. So we can provide the best quality technology and allow instructors to then build their assignments as they, as they see fit, use whatever resources they, they might need without sort of being tied to any one particular textbook. So I'll pause there for a second. Obviously, feel free to, to stop and ask questions if you'd like. I'm hop back into an assignment. Peter Quadrates. So again, I just wanted to sort of highlight and, and show you guys, uh, you know, this is uh, this is what we call the educator dashboard. Uh, we give you the ability to actually do uh, toggle on to a student view. So if you want to see what the students are experiencing, you can actually do that. You can actually walk through the assignment as a student would. You can do that directly from the interface um, here. And so we give students the ability to sort of, you know, toggle to the next question, things like that. Uh, this is a fun uh, flagpole question here. I was like this. We have the the moving uh, GIF here uh, in motion. Um, but this also actually adjusts in sizes. So when you're using, uh, actually, when you regenerate this question, you're used, looking at a different uh, uh, iteration of this question, we actually adjust the size and weighting. So it actually scales correctly as well. So the content that we're able to provide is really robust and, and sort of something that I don't think you'll see in the system. Part of that's because of, you know, that computer algebra system that we were able to provide so we can ask questions that really people can't ask. Um, but also because we have a really great content team. So some of the things that we think about. Um, so our content team works in, in two week sprints. We actually constantly churn out new functionality, new questions, um, you know, filling gaps and take feedback from partners. So, you know, Richard mentioned at the start of the, um, the webinar here is that, you know, part of how we operate is that we really listen to our partners. All of the functionality that you see built within the system is because we talk to our partners, we listen, and then we actually put that into the system. Um, and you know, I, I've never worked at a place where sort of the, the sales team is trying to keep up with the technology team so that we can actually build things and they're in the system almost immediately. So like our content team, our technology team also works in, in two weeks sprints. So we're constantly pushing out new features, iterating on things, listening to our partners, because, you know, this is, we want to make this something that is actually helping instructors, saving them time and actually uh, allowing them to sort of you know, work in a more efficient manner with, with their students. We know with, with COVID and everything that happened, it was really sort of 
online was really thrown on math instructors. And, you know, one of the things that definitely noticed in his journey with Canvas was that they, some of the, the technology and the iterations and the, the things that um, people were building, it was really the math instructors were left out. They didn't have high quality tools. They try to give, you know, a, a math test in, in the learning management system that doesn't have an, the ability to understand math. You can create like multiple choice questions, but you can't really ask questions that evaluate students' understanding. And so the goal here is to allow that opportunity for instructors, give them flexibility to do this in whichever manner they want, but then also, you know, provide cost savings for both the, the student side or um, on the institution side. So uh, again, we're just looking at a student preview here, just showing you, you know, what the students are looking at, but I'll pause there for a second. So any questions? I want to leave a little bit of time at the end if we, if we have any questions. Um, but if not, uh, we can go ahead and uh, wrap. But I wanted to highlight a few key things here. So we have a lot of different information. Um, we have uh, a lot of things that we have uh, uh, offering uh, within Derivative. So these are some key things I wanted to highlight um, you know, for, for our purposes here, some things I thought might be relevant for, for the system. I'll pause there. Any questions, anything? Uh, Connor and, and Richard, you'd like to add? Where are we needed? No, we can hear you. We're working on the technology. <laughs> uh, I get it. <laughs> this it's really amazing. I'm really struck by how the technology gets out of the way for the student. Um, if you're wanting them to focus on algebra. Um, don't make them fiddle with too many, <laughs> too many buttons or interfaces or logins. And yep. this just gets all of that off to the side where it's all about the content. Um, and that's something I think what our members find is that that can start to become an obstacle for students. It's just one more thing to get tripped up on. Mm -hmm. And it's also something they have to spend time themselves dealing with. And so mm -hmm. the, the more invisible that gets uh, it's uh, it's it pays off uh, for them in terms of where they can focus their attention. Yeah, and that's really the philosophy is you know within derivatives really kind of removing those barriers. Like you said, it you know just having technology issues or you know being on the wrong device or you know needing the access code like these are all things that not only take time away from students but also time away from instructors. Right, trying to you know, focus on actually instruction and, and you know, helping their students. Uh, we want to eliminate the things that are sort of outside of the bounds of the actual work that they're supposed to be doing. So that's kind of a key piece of the, the philosophy at Derivata. Well, and often that that comes at the cost of losing control or the ability to be creative, that yes, you've simplified everything, but now I can only do five things. And there are 18 other things I want to be able to do. And this seems like the, you've got just complete control over, over what you um, want to be doing with your students. Um, we've got a couple of comments here. Tammy says she'll be sharing this with other instructors. Looks great. Uh, like that it, with different technology. We, um, I've talked with uh, some of our members about this. I, and uh, Josh, we've, I, I think I've told you this. I always try and keep in mind that I really don't know much. Uh, I am not a math teacher, and uh, if, if you know, I might have some wild guess as to whether something's any good. <laughs> but I really need to hear from our members. And what I've heard uh, from folks has been really uh, unanimous and and enthusiastic that this this is a. Uh, uh, this really is different and worth people's attention. Uh, Jennifer uh, is kind of cutting to the chase here about cost. She says, where's mm -hmm. the cost? How do y'all, how do y'all approach the cost question? Yeah. So, uh, we have an agreement with the, with the TCCTA. So really, you know, part of leveraging the sort of larger system was to be able to provide pricing breaks. So we have a, a, a unique pricing structure for, uh, the members of TCCTA, but I'll, I'll talk. So we have, the ability to sort of uh, offer this in, in many different ways. And so the, the pricing ranges from about $30 to 25, depending on uh, the mode in which you're offering it. But so we have direct to student models, right? So students directly paying for, for the product. Um, so they're prompted to pay uh, through the interface. Um, we can work through bookstores. 
um, occlusive access. Um, so we can work in all the different modes that you're used to using uh, to, to purchase software. And then we also have an enterprise solution, right? So if the institution wants to purchase derivative as a technology that they're providing for the students, we also have the ability to that. And we charge based on a, a per seat uh, basis. So that's a um, the direct to student model is per student per semester. So students can pay directly through either the, the bookstore, through the you know, a course fee, which a lot of uh, institutions will do, or, or or just direct to students. So we want to provide, so we're coming in at a much lower price point than some of your standard publishers. So we want to provide the sort of, we think the catalog of technology and then allow instructors to uh, pair that with, uh, you know, any kind of textbook. So again, we have a unique pricing structure with the, with the system that's, uh, you know, available for everybody, but we can work in any, any mode that seems, uh, you know, appropriate for the institution. And and I know you mentioned, um, and we've talked about this that this is this is really designed uh, not just for teaching online courses or mm -hmm. students online, uh, but that that students actually prefer using and faculty prefer using this inside of a classroom or you all in the same. Absolutely. Room. But uh, this just gives um, so many tools that you can use in that environment as well. Yeah, we we uh, you know this. This is all delivered online, right? But we are primarily used for in-class in instruction, but then also asynchronously. So some, you know, you have students that are in class, some students are joining via Zoom. This is designed to be worked in any different modality that, you know, uh, instructors are kind of forced to be in in, in these days. Uh, so we know that that is always changing. And so we want to provide the flexibility to do that in any different way. Well, I, I think the, the way our members have just been jostled back and forth where yeah. <laughs> we never know from uh, semester to semester what we might be dealing with exactly. uh, being able to pivot very quickly uh is is more important than it's ever been um well this is this has been some really good information i, I know we we always as an organization look for things where we we think we're onto something that that uh this is something that would be of interest to our members then we follow up and try and confirm that with our members um, and then where we can add some value, then we can come in and, and do like uh, we've done where uh, we're helping our members get a, a good, uh, you know, a, a price for this and our involvement helps with that. So Absolutely. that's what we try and do as an organization. And uh, I, I know that our members take advantage of that a lot uh, and they, they look for those opportunities to save their students or their institutions a few dollars. And um, so we really, uh, we really do encourage that. Um, well, I want to thank you all for being with us. We're going to be posting the recording of this uh, on the TCCTA YouTube channel. We'll send the link out to everybody after uh, after we wrap this up, and Connor has it up in the uh, the um, in on YouTube. Uh, please feel free to share this with colleagues. Uh, I'd I'd love to get some feedback from you all if you see uh, an opportunity here and something that uh, you think is is a value. Uh, I'd love to to know uh, if we're on the right track here. So uh, let me know what you think, and uh, we'll be following up. And uh, I believe Derivative is going to be with us at our convention in Houston in March. Yep. So be looking for them there. We'll send more Absolutely. information out about that as as the date gets closer. Uh, speaking of which, uh, you might go ahead and and uh, log on and get registered. Take care of your ho hotel reservations and everything before those fill up. And I'd uh, love to see everybody in Houston. It's so great to be able to do that again. So um, Absolutely. please be with us for that. Well, I think we've uh, done all our, our business here today. So Josh, thanks so much for being with us and thank you all for, for joining us on the call and uh, look forward to seeing you in Houston. Excellent. Thanks everybody.